Since the beginning of the year, we've heard a lot of talk about coronavirus vaccine patents and how waiving them in a global health crisis would speed the vaccination effort across the world. The president has decided that uh, we are going to waive uh, patent protections uh, and uh, around the COVID-19 vaccines to pave the way uh, for producing the supply that the world needs. Others point out that patents keep technology and intellectual property secure. But before we get into how that would work, we need to know what a patent is and its purpose. If you are a researcher or a scientist or an inventor and you would like to receive a patent on your particular invention, you go to your country's patent office and file a patent application where at that point the patent office examines your patent application to make sure the invention is actually new and it's useful and that it's also more than just a trivial improvement over what came prior to it. This process takes, roughly speaking, about three years, at least here in the United States. For any of the coronavirus vaccines offered now, there are dozens of patents. For example, this graph created by Nature magazine is a rough sample of interconnected patents submitted across the world, licenses and lawsuits. Waving them all would take a massive effort. Some even say a magic wand. That's because a country like the U.S. would have to go to the World Trade Organization and have a vote among all its members. Even if everyone agrees, many say the process could take months, even years, to be approved. Time that many people don't have as coronavirus variants rapidly spread in many parts of the world. But let's take the other scenario. What if patent waivers were approved much more rapidly? Kenneth Sheehan, Moderna's co-founder, compares massive patent waivers to going dining at a five-star restaurant. We all have our favorite restaurants. And with the pandemic, you know, we go back to our homes and we try to recreate those, right? It's kind of natural. And so what we have is a written recipe, but sometimes what we find is we don't have the right ingredients, we don't have the unique preparatory cookware in certain cases, or the subtle know-how on how to get these on the plate and the palate with the same effect. And the consequences are not severe in that case. But if you take the recipe for mRNA vaccines, and if you do not faithfully pay attention to every single detail, I can guarantee you that there is a danger that you could hurt somebody. What Shin is trying to say here is that a waiver alone would not increase the world's vaccine supply. It would need a process known as tech transfer, in which patent holders, in this case the pharmaceuticals, supply technical know-how and personnel. Meaning, if the pharma companies don't want to share their knowledge on how to make mRNA vaccines, a patent waiver would not do any good. Chris Rowland, who covers the pharmaceutical industry for The Post, says the notion of forcing these patents out into the open and taking them away from companies may sound good politically, but an unwilling partner is no partner at all. If you don't have the Pfizer's and the Moderna's on board and willing to, to cooperate in these projects, it's not going to happen. There's also the question of releasing mRNA technology. Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines, manufactured for the first time at an industrial scale, can be modified much more rapidly to tackle variants and do not need to be grown in steel tanks, like the Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, Sputnik V, and Sinovac vaccines. These companies are concerned about not coronavirus vaccine necessarily, but because this technology has so much promise for future vaccines and future therapies and drugs for all kinds of different diseases, that they really have a, an opportunity with these vaccines to you know, revolutionize the way we get drugs and the way drugs are made. As one advocate put it to me, they're concerned about letting the genie out of the bottle. Pfizer's on track to make $25 billion off their vaccine in 2021, which makes it the largest selling pharmaceutical product in global history in one year. Moderna is on track to make $15 to $17 billion, and they've never even had a product that they've sold before. And so they don't necessarily want to teach developing nations or, company, or countries like India that um, supply generic drugs to developing world how to make this amazing new technology. Surkov says the U.S. and other developed countries shouldn't waste time with patent waivers. Instead, he says, they should buy all the available vaccines and donate them to countries in need, something the Biden administration is planning on doing. In my direction, the United States will purchase an additional half billion doses from Pfizer, Pfizer vaccine, that will donate nearly 100 
low and lower middle income countries. They will be the beneficiaries. Here in Congress right now, we're fighting over an infrastructure bill that by all measures eclipses trillions of dollars. A fraction of that could be used to just buy every vaccine Moderna and Pfizer could possibly make and just literally giving it away. It's all about, you know, yeah, why don't we engage in multilateral negotiations with 130 countries while uh, crematoriums in India work around the clock such that they light up the night sky.